Happy Wine Wednesday! <laughs> We're back, and this week we have two cameramen behind the phones. Yes, our wonderful husbands are taking video, one on Instagram, one on Facebook, so we appreciate you guys. <laughs> um, it's their dream come true. It's everything they ever wanted. But they will be fielding questions, so please, fire them away. Yep. Um, tonight we thought we would do something a little different from our normal kind of interview style indoors and be outside in the vineyard because first of all, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful time of year in the vineyards. And second of all, sometimes it, we just need a break and need to be outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. We're both still working from home. Well, I guess working from home is the vineyards for you, kind of. Yeah. I'm, I work from home as much as I can and then I have to be in the field quite often. So. Has to be. What a rough life. So what a hard. rough, rough life. I wish this was my office. Yeah. Um, but we did think it'd be fun to come out here today, kind of give you an update on the growing season, what's happening right now in the vineyard. Um, there are little babies coming to life. You can see them as we get closer. I wish you all could see our cameraman. This is hilarious. Slowly they are moving. slowly stepping. Pan to the vineyard, pan, pan. <laughs> Close that beauty shot at the vineyard, um, but it's super fun. So we thought we'd get Nikki out here. We're in the Mel Ranch today. Yes. So we have. Um, and we're drinking Louis Mel. Louis Mel in the Mel Ranch, um, but this is actually Cabernet Sauvignon, which is only fitting because Sauvignon Blanc, which is our Louis Mel Sauv Blanc here that we're drinking, is a parent to Cabernet Sauvignon in the way that wine grapes have parents. Yeah. The when Cabernet I was. Blanc? Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc. They all made babies. One happy family. And um, that's really why I picked this wine tonight because I was thinking about it just like that. No, I really just wanted to have a Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, anyways, just please fire questions away about the vineyards and I am here to answer them. She is, but why don't, until people start asking questions, why don't you just tell us what's happening right now? Yeah. What are we looking at? So what you're looking at is a vineyard in max canopy or almost max canopy for some of these little shorter shoots that have a little bit more to grow. But these ones here probably are going to be capped off now. Um, it's that time of year. And then we are now moving from bloom into full set. So um, the berries are pretty small still right now, but they will um, be sizing up just a little bit more. In general, this clone of Cabernet is pretty small berries. So it's clone 337, which is a French clone. Um, and uh, it's a, a smaller size cluster with loose, uh, small berries. So they're not tight together. They don't butt up to each other when they size up. They stay pretty small, really great flavor concentration, beautiful aromatic. Yeah, if, it, um, if you guys were closer. Cameramen. <laughs> Cameramen. Cameramen. So you can see that there's really, really good spacing here, which is what we want. We don't want the berries to be butt up. That means that they're going to get more even sunlight on every berry. Um, they will grow a little bit from this uh, size here, but not by too much more. They're definitely not going to get to your table grape size. So <laughs> that would be crazy. We would have so much wine. <laughs> we had wine too grapes that were wine. like the size of... Um, quarters. And I feel like the smaller the berry, maybe this is a misconception, but the smaller the berry, it's almost like the more concentrated the flavor. Oh, no, no, that's absolutely correct. Oh, it the, is. Huh. The more skin you have, the better the flavor concentration is going to be, um, and the better the color is going to be, because you get all of the color from the skins. Yeah. yeah. Do you taste berries along the way to judge how everything is growing? Um, do I taste berries along the way to judge how things are growing? Yes, but not until I start to see them turning colors. Not yet. For yeah, sure. that would be a really sour little berry. It, it might not even be sour yet. Like it might just taste like absolute That's like vegetal green. maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. like you ate a, a leaf. Um, but when they when the cabernet berries start to turn purple, I'll start tasting them as soon as probably seventy five percent of the cluster is purple, just to start to see what flavor characteristics this block is coming out with. This vineyard here is only about. Um, we planted it in the end of 2016, I think. Pretty late in the season, we planted dormants. So, which is sort of abnormal. We like to plant in May. That's our preferred time to plant grapes. But we sometimes will plant when they're dormant just because that's when we were able to plant. And um, 
this vineyard here was planted in 2016. So last year was its first real year of uh, production and this will be its second year. We had a tiny cheater crop in 2018. Tiny, tiny, tiny. And what I mean is like very, very small amount of fruit coming off. But last year was our first real harvest and this year will be like the first, let's see how this vineyard can really play uh, harvest. Because first few years, are never your best quality of a vineyard. You kind of wait until year five and then you're set. Just like you. you know? Yeah. As you grow up, you get better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I was specifically talking about Nikki. Just me. Uh, yeah, like she's gotten a lot better with her age. Um, coming from her sister's point of view. But I do think, okay, so when I, I was working um, with jean Vieve Janssen's over at Robin Davi Winery, she and I don't know if you do the same thing and now I'm wondering. Yeah. Um, so they would walk down, she is a winemaker, but she would walk down the rows and as you're going through harvest and trying to understand are the grapes ready, she would eat a grape, um, chew up the skin, but then spit the seeds into her hand to see what color they were. Mm -hmm. um, do you do that? Yeah. So okay. it, did I get oh, it right? Maybe I, mean, I maybe like butchered that a little no, bit, no, but totally. it thought it was super interesting. So what I do is I take the grape, I chew up the, or I try and separate the skin from the seeds, I yeah. spit the seeds out, and I keep the skin in my mouth. Yeah. And then I look at the seeds color. If they're brown um, and they're lignified is what we call it, um, so they're no longer green seeds, they're now brown, yeah. that means you're approaching ripeness. Mm -hmm. And then I chew the skin as much as I can, and then I spit out all of the juice and skin to see what color my spit is. And yes, I know that's okay, a little that's graphic, graphic. Was missing, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, but you want to see how much color is being extracted from the skins because the longer you let it hang out on the vine, the better that color is gonna come out. And then if you leave it too long, the color will start to degrade. So you have a small window of maybe five days where you really want to capture that color. And then you like if you if you miss it, you start to lose color. There's a cat. A cat? It's like a it's like a. Oh my gosh, there is a cat in the vineyard, yes. which I love cats, so it's really hard for me to stand right where I am. It's and a not feral cat, Allie. Cat. We don't go and pet stray cats, or they're not strays. They're, We've they're, adopted they're wild. many stray cats. Well, yes, stray no, cats are different than wild cats. This one it's grew up me. here. Not to me. <gasps> I think it's coming to us. Well, anyways, how, many, how often are you walking through the vineyards during harvest? Oh, during harvest every day, I mean, because we have to check sugar concentration, PHTA, and we're sampling every single block that we farm once a week during harvest. So we're just trying to get um, the sugar concentration understanding, but we're walking vineyards every day. I'd probably say I'd see each vineyard during harvest, each vineyard block. So a block is just a specific section of any vineyard land we have um, twice a week during harvest. Yeah, a lot of walking. Yeah, it is. I, I walk a lot. Yeah. And I was talking to a friend today and I told her how much I was walking and she's like, wow, that's insane. I know. Well, sorry. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. I know, I have a friend. I was talking to a friend. <laughs> I suggest it. Highly recommended. Yeah. Talking to friends is great. Um, if anyone has any questions, please ask Nikki while we're out here. But in the meantime, I'll continue to ask Nikki because I'm all. Oh, you have a question? Yes, question. How long do the vines last before you need to replant? That's a great question. How long do the vines last before you need to replant them? So in general, we have kind of a rule of thumb of at 25 years nowadays, you start to see the vines degrading and it might be time to rip out and replant. In the past, um, you were able to kind of extend the life a lot longer. Uh, and that's because nowadays there's a lot of different viruses or bacterial infections or fungal infections that can really reduce the vine's lifespan. But that said, we have some vines planted in our vineyards in Arroyo Seco in the Riva Ranch, um, some Chardonnay as well as our Riva Ranch Pinot Noir um, that ha were planted in 1964 and they're still thriving um, and that has a lot to do with the rootstock that they're on. It's just a really powerful rootstock that pushes right through all the virus um, and allows the vines to continue to thrive even with some internal failures. So I think it's safe to say it just depends on the vineyard. Totally. It depends on the vineyard. It depends on, but I, a lot of our vineyards in Livermore, I'd say 30 years is probably the, the tap out year, which is sad because it used to be a lot longer. Any questions from you, cameraman in blue? <laughs> Not yet. I encourage the Facebook users to ask questions. So Nikki, what I think you have to scroll on the Facebook one. 
Yeah. Okay. Yep. So Nikki, what's gonna happen from now to harvest? Like, what does this little baby vineyard need to go through? Yeah. So we're right in the middle of pulling up all the wires. So you see, we have one wire here, one wire up here. So we've already done the first wire in most blocks, and now we're moving on to the second wire, which is that top one. Um, just to keep the vineyards up nice and tall and straight, you which allows... missed it. She actually did this before we started our live. She went and just fixed this whole row. Well, because it was leaning over and I wanted you guys to get a better view. <laughs> um, we'll probably be in this ranch either end of, like, Friday this week or maybe, um, maybe beginning of next week. But after we lift up the wires, then they'll come through and hand leaf this vineyard um, to try and get the best sun exposure on the fruit. Um, what we like to say is we leave a little hat on every cluster so that it has no leaves down here. So we remove all of these, but then leave like a tiny little hat up here so that it covers sun a little hat. bit. Yeah, a little sun hat. Huh. Um, question. Guys... Question. Any any gauge on the, the size of um, and timing of harvest this year? Um, so this year we're thinking that harvest is going to be about 10 days earlier than last year, which was about last year was about 15 days later than normal so we're thinking we're probably about five days behind normal but a lot earlier than last year which is good so probably we'll start picking grapes august 27th so we're getting back and which that. which That's varietals are harvested harvested first so we always harvest sauvignon blanc and um sparkling sparkling first thank you um, so those are, cause sparkling you pick got a really low sugar and that's what makes it so fresh and yummy. Um, and Sauvignon Blanc just ripens much quicker than a lot of the other varieties. And do you do anything different with the nth degree wines? Um, our nth degree wines definitely are treated different. So in nth degree, we are very meticulous about how many clusters we're leaving on each shoot. We're meticulous about the leafing, about the shoot positioning. So how many shoots are left on the vine? What's a shoot? A shoot is the, the green, this, this green stick is a shoot. Is a shoot. One of these is a shoot. So they want to make sure they know exactly what's on it. Yeah. And we want all of the shoots to be the same length for nth degree. And we want, um, <laughs> giving us funny cues. We don't have to be so close together. And you're not in the camera. I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is what happens when you hire your husband to be the cameraman. <laughs> oh my god, too funny. Um, so we're just, we farm very meticulously. Everything's hand, uh, hand handled uh, and hand harvested and hand it's sorted. hand sorted and it also um, will go through uh, a, a lot longer time left on the vine. So we try and get those wines pretty ripe because that's that whole that beautiful, that big, yeah, yeah, yummy style. Um, are your shards put in oak? Yes. Well, so we not have, all um, of them. not all of them. Yeah. So we have one Chardonnay that's made stainless steel and a little bit of concrete goes into that one, but no oak. And then we have one Chardonnay that is half stainless steel, half oak. And then we have one that's 90% oak and 10% stainless steel. And then we have one that is 100% oak. Yeah. So a little we bit of everything. All, we make a Chardonnay for everyone. And if you didn't get a chance, you should really watch our National Chardonnay Day Wine Wednesday that oh, you can yeah. find on our website with our dad um, because he walks through Eric's Morning Fog, Riva Ranch, and then Nth Degree, which are all the Chardonnays that Nikki just mentioned made in different styles and kind of walked you through each of them. And then really fun history because he's our historian. Yeah, yeah. he is our historian. And do you uh, lose any fruit to wildlife? Absolutely. We saw baby deer munching as yeah. we came here. The deer will, they like the young succulent green growth of the, the shoots, the green vegetative growth that you see uh, on the grapevines. And so they'll eat the shoot so much that no fruit can ever be developed because they've just nubbed it down all the way to the woody bark. Um, and then we have birds that eat probably five to 10% of our crop, but we hire a falconer now that comes through and runs falcons through the vineyards during harvest months to try and keep away the birds. The, Pretty incredible. It is really, and we've seen, it used to be closer to 20% of our fruit was lost to birds during the ripening period. And now it's down to 10, 10 five to 10. And that's an incredible, a lot of fruit that we're saving 
It's worth every penny. We love the falconer. Thank you, Jana. <laughs> Um, how many passes do you get, or how many passes do you do in each vineyard block? That's a great question. It really depends. So my first priority and my team's first priority is vine health and fruit quality. So we go through and we're watching every single vine, every vineyard, and we're trying to make sure that we're making the best decisions for these vines future health and how we can continue to protect that. Um, at the end of the day, we definitely have blocks that we're putting more passes into because those blocks tend to end up in the nth degree or um, other high-end programs. But that doesn't mean that we're not focusing on the blocks that are going into other programs because we really want our vines to have longevity and, and we want to take care of what nature has so generously afforded us through these vines. And so lots of questions coming in about the weather. Looks like it's beautiful weather today, which it is, but there's also been some weird weather. So what's the overall effect on that, on the grapes? <laughs> so the weather <laughs> has been a little strange, but actually kind of for the best this year. So we had a pretty cold spring, which in general, so let's back up. Wet winter, or dry winter, dry winter, no rain in winter, which is not great. You want rain during dormancy because that helps your root stimulate stimulate stim, stimulate stimulation stimulation stim, stimul stim <laughs> stimulates the roots yeah. <laughs> i think you were making up a word i am yeah um making up words here um so you want a wet winter but we didn't get that and then we had a weird warm february so everything kind of woke up early and then it got cold and rainy right. so everything kind of just halted which we were a little nervous about, but it halted at a good point. It was just right at bud break. There was nothing uh, on the vine, no bloom, no no nothing yeah, that could be- mess up the flowering Correct, yeah. yeah, no damage to the grapevines. Um, and then it got warm again after all of the rain. So we got the rain we needed, because really wet spring. And so that stimulated actually really great growth because it's basically a nature applied irrigation. And then now we've had really windy days and really hot days, but in general, the heat days have got cool at night, which is what we like. That's helping us to keep the fruit zone cool, but also stimulate growth because the more heat accumulation, the faster your vines are gonna grow. And then getting that nice breeze that we've had, cause we've had really windy weather has been great just to keep that airflow moving and not allowing that heat to just settle. So we've actually been really fortunate with the weather. I'm hoping that it kind of sticks along this path. It looks like it's gonna to start to warm up too. So we're gonna to start yeah. to just- I'm okay with warming. 90s. Once it gets into the hundreds, that's when I'm telling the weather gods to no, cool it doesn't off. look that warm, says so my weather right here on my wrist. Okay. How do your yields look for this, this harvest? Yields look good. They are much more um, stable, I'd say, than in, in past years. The last two years were pretty big harvests. Um, 18 was very Huge. big, and then last Huge. year was a little less, um, closer to 17. Um, but this year looks very well balanced. Like you can even see, there's not too much fruit on the vines here. These are, it is a younger vineyard, but in 18, this vineyard was already pushing fruit and you know, this is a, a stable amount of crop. We like this. Um, this probably won't need a fruit drop in most of the block. It might need some in, a, in some of the weaker sections because it is a young block, but it's doing really well and it's a good fruit set that we have here. Are these all Wenty clones? Um, no, this is clone 337, which is a French clone. Of Cabernet, yeah. But we have a we have a lot of Wenty clone on property Chardonnay, and the Sauvignon Blanc that we're drinking is actually the Wenty clone of Sauvignon Blanc. So, cheers! Enjoy your Louis Mel Wenty clone. Coming Ooh. to you from two Wenty clones. Yes, we are. We are actually clones. Clones ourselves. <laughs> Lots of great questions. Lots of people. I know. Super wow. Interested. Nikki feels like she's getting in. Like, awesome. <gasps> this is an interview, Nikki. Do, do You've been doing good. Am I sweating? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Any other? No questions from Instagram cameraman. I must have just got it. Got through it all. They're starting to feel bad on Instagram. <laughs> No, but it is always fun to come into the vineyard with you and even to like hear other people ask you questions because it's just 
We're all learning. Yeah. You two, you guys can't see them. They're learning. I feel like you have another question. What is a fruit drop? A fruit drop is where we come through and we'll cut fruit off the vine because it's overcropped. So we don't want to um, leave too much fruit on the vine and we'll literally throw it on the ground, um, which is kind of sad, but at the end of the day, it's gonna support our quality promise to all of our customers. So we wanna make sure that we're providing you guys with what you expect in your glass. And um, because why does it help quality? Why it helps quality is because when you drop the fruit, uh, it allows all of the nutrients and energy from the vine to go directly into the clusters, still connected to the vine. So the cat is coming here. I knew she would. There's the cat, everyone. Hey. Oh my gosh, this is such a fun day. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you want to see her? <laughs> We are in nature, so the cat loves grapes, too. <laughs> oh, man. How many acres does Wenty farm in the Tri-Valley? In the Tri-Valley, right now, um, we probably are farming around 1,500 acres that are planted. And then we have probably another six to 800 in rotation. And what I mean by in rotation is that they're fallow and we're letting the land rest because we want to rejuvenate our soils before replanting. So we either previously removed plants maybe a few years ago, or we just removed plants. I know I've had a lot of questions about what the piles are, why the vines are being removed in a few different ranches that we're farming. And that's all because the vines were old. They were no longer producing the grapes that we needed um, because they were sick and tired <laughs> and they needed to go to sleep. So now we're going to let the soil rejuvenate, probably give them hopefully three to five years. Um, before we have the necessity to plant again, but it all kind of depends on demand and soil types. So I only will plant certain varieties and certain soil types, and that's super important to me. So whatever soil types we have available, if that's what the demand is, we'll plant. I think that's actually an important point and maybe something that not everyone knows, is that what you want to plant on a vineyard site is actually pretty specific oh, to yeah. what the soil is, what the weather is, what the environment is. If there's cats in the vineyard. If there's cats, I mean, if there's cats, any vineyard would love to be planted. <laughs> so, uh, lots of positive feedback from Facebook and lots of questions. Um, what's your favorite summer poolside drink? Oh. oh. Nate's oh. margarita, of course. That's Allie's husband. He makes a mean margarita. Um, but besides yeah. that, Nikki's rosé. We, we enjoyed some Nikki's rosé at the pool. On National Rosé Day, which was Saturday. Yeah, I was going to say yesterday, but no, it was Saturday. <gasps> the uh, day's all blurred together. Yeah. Oh, Instagram. Zach's got a lot of questions coming in. Oh, man. How many grapes in weight are yielded in an acre generally? And then, <laughs> two-part question. Really How many pounds of grapes are needed for a single bottle of wine? We talked about this. 33! Someone's right? testing you for sure. Was it 33 or was it 3.3? Dang I it! Remember. I have to, it's something... 33 th pounds? No, that seems that too seems high. It's 3.3. 3.3 3. for one bottle of wine. And that we see between 3 and 6 tons per acre. Um, and a ton is 2,000 pounds. So... So do the math at home. <laughs> <laughs> So we don't have a calculator, but it's a lot of yes. pounds. Yes. And then a question for each of you. What is the most special single vineyard on the Wenty property? So maybe what's your favorite vineyard and what wine comes from it? I'll go first. Okay. You've been talking so much. Um, okay. So, I mean, from a wine perspective, I think I've all told you that I'm a Riva Diva through and through, but my favorite vineyard is Wetmore Vineyard. Like there, there is like a special feeling when you're driving down Arroyo Road and you're going to um, the tasting lounge, Arroyo property or the golf course there of like seeing these beautiful rolling hills with olive trees running down and the mountains in the back. And for some reason, like the sun is always beautiful and the music is playing and it just like, it makes my heart feel so full of love. I don't know, like I just feel so happy looking at that vineyard. Yeah, so my favorite vineyards, there's one out front of my dad's house that's actually our heritage clone of Chardonnay. So it's wood that has never left our property since 1908 and 1912 when the two different um, Chardonnay wood came to our property. So that's really special. And then my other favorite that's is- That's a really special one. I feel like she, I should have gone second. Okay. 
And then my other favorite one is in Arroyo Seco. We purchased that property in 1962. Um, in 1964, my dad helped to graft, a, or excuse me. Yeah, 1964, I'm pretty sure was when he helped to graft one of the vineyards, um, which is where you kind of do a little chip off the side of a piece of wood and you stick another piece of wood against it and that Fine. creates yeah, vine, vine wood, yeah, I'm like, and that creates a new variety of, of vine. And so, I, whenever I'm down there and um, I meet uh, the meet with our coworkers down there, they always talk about when Philip came out and grafted with them, and they love it. And it, it just feels special going in that vineyard. Yeah, I've been trying to get you to go. Um, would you describe the Sauv Blanc that you're enjoying and can you convince them to buy some? Ooh. Oh, wow. Elevator pitch. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I just think the Sauv Blanc, yeah, I was like, get it, is super refreshing. It's crisp. It's not, so it's not overly strong. So it's not going to have that like real intensity of a New Zealand Sauv Blanc. I think it actually has some like nice minerality in here. It's balanced. Like you can come back for more without having your palate be tired so I think that's incredible and then I also just think it's you know talking about Louis Mellon in the honor of him and he was just such a um, visionary for his time um, which I'll let Nikki talk about because yeah. I knew that's what you were going to say. No I just think for this Sauv Blanc I think it sells itself you try a little bit of it and it's such a beautiful expression of lemon zest and wet stone um, yeah. And it has just a little tiny hint of green grassy, which I love because that is natural soft blanc in its element. I think that it, it's grown in really deep gravel soils right here on Mel Ranch, similar to the soils, but even more gravelly than, than the ones we're standing in now. And it's, it's actually just the perfect soft blanc. I think that this wine absolutely sells itself to everyone that tries it. They buy more. Also, um, screw cap. Like that is convenience. I know, I love a good screw Half cap. the reason I even chose this wine tonight, well one, because I love the flavor, but two, because the convenience of a screw cap is so nice. It really it is. really is. I, I hands down agree. Yeah. So um, lots of questions around how you can buy the wine. Um, you know, do you guys have a digital online store? How does it work? Yeah, you can buy all the wines online um, on our website at winetubeinners.com right now. And we're really looking forward, you know, to when you can stop by the property. But if you don't live locally, you can absolutely buy them online. You can also find this in store, like yeah. in a lot of places. So even if you aren't going into store right now and you're using, you know, Instacart or Drizzly or, you know, food delivery service apps, like definitely look for our wines because a lot of them do have our wines on there. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on the vineyards. This was super fun. Yes. And different. I know. We'll have to do it again, maybe in a different vineyard, so you guys can ask different questions. Yeah. But um, thank you guys for joining us. We hope everyone has a really great day and stays safe and healthy and happy and enjoy some sunshine. Yeah. Summer is, summer is here. Basically. Believe it or not. <laughs> thank you so much. Happy Wine Wednesday. Cheers. Cheers.